This episode of Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium batch, roast-to-order, veteran-owned coffee company in your own backyard of Perrysburg, Ohio. They are fair trade certified, USDA organic, and integrity is their core value to do the, the right thing even when no one is looking. They have high quality coffee beans directly imported from countries such as Colombia, Brazil, Peru, Indonesia, and other far off lands. Coffee is also coming K cup, K cup gift cards available for the holiday season. And as always, free shipping over $50. Again, head on over to ironbeancoffee.com to get your order of coffee. Iron Bean Coffee Company, where they are America's local coffee roaster. This episode of the Sloop... Nope, nope, we don't do a second ad read here. It's all good. Uh, God, that's just like, it's ingrained into me at this point. You this episode is also brought to by you. You! <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, just uh, since we're already talking, uh, come hang out on our discord server. We talk, uh, we talked a lot of national signing day today. We're recording this on early national signing day. Um, and also if you aren't already, please be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel our Buckeye scoop specific YouTube channel, as we will be leaving the Buckeye scoop effective January 1st. So, uh, Come if you if you've been watching this or listening to this, uh, enjoying it, hopefully over on the uh, Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel, we will be moving to our own YouTube channel uh, again, effective January 1st. So with that, Kyle, That's... let's uh, let's get the episode started. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Oh, welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right. How are you doing today, Jared? Oh, you know, um, it, it was it was a uh, it was a national signing day. It was it was not the best. Um, I still I still do not like having this early signing day. I no. Understand why? But no, I don't. I don't understand why. It's it's just not the same. That first week in February. Yeah, it's a second Christmas for us. Not yeah. not a pre not a pre Christmas here. Yeah, yeah, and it's not it's not good for I don't who is this supposed to benefit? Who is this supposed it's, to benefit? Because it's benefiting the football programs, period. Yeah, it was supposed to be like oh this way the kids can can sign early and and get it out of the way and then they don't have to worry about recruiting and da, 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 and even when they initially said that we we thought it was crap. This is not mm -hmm. good because immediately year one, year one, it became the expectation, not an option. The expectation that you sign on early signing day for God's sakes, Gabe powers is waiting until Friday to sign. And it got people all nervous. And these, and, and these kids are really supposed to wait until February and, and not catch heat from people. I mean, if it was me, again, maybe I'm missing something else, Jared. You aren't. Like, there's so much more coaching changes that's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, there, there's there's already a lot that there's already a lot that happened, but post bowl season here. Post sure. national title. So much happens here. And you, you don't know. You don't know what changes, what else changes is going to happen. This this really benefits the football programs because more more coaching changes is going to happen. And oh, oops, you already you already signed your NIL, or yeah, you already yeah. So it and I don't know. I'm just I'm just not a fan of it. But here we are. We're going to, we're going to talk about it because this is this is the hot topic. Yeah. Um, got got a lot of um, we got currently 17 Ohio State NLI by the way. N I L N I L N I L N L I. It's N. Yes. Yeah, I know. And people have been messing it up. You're not the only one, believe me. It's very easy. All right. So, so we have 17. We have 17 commits who have signed their letter of intent. Yeah. And as Jared said, we're still waiting for the one uh, Gabe Powers 
this Friday. Not worried. Not worried about him at all. So no, no concern there. He's they're, they're just doing, uh, I believe, some sort of ceremony uh, in Marysville for the high school with the high school. And yeah, no, no, no concerns. No worries there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a I mean, you look at this class, it, the big thing everyone's going to talk about and rightfully so. Ohio State does lose one of their best uh, commit or verbal commits in Terrence Brooks, who yeah. flipped to go to Texas. It was a big blow. Not going to not going to um, sugarcoat that. It's it's a big blow. It's a yep. big time corner that Ohio State really wanted in this recruiting class, and it was it was a big blow. Texas now got Terrence Brooks away from Ohio State, and they got they got um. Quinn Ewers, who transferred from Ohio yeah. State to Texas. So Texas going in the right direction, question mark? Well, you know, if that right direction is green. Um, listen, guys, with NIL, you are not supposed to, you're not allowed to uh, make promises or have deals lined up for players who are not uh, signed to the university yet. And I'm just telling you right now it's happening. It's a big, big gray area. Like, well, cause you have to, uh, on it. Like you have to prove if someone with the university acts as a bridge from the booster and whatever thing that they are going to be having the player advertise for. And the player you have to prove that they made that bridge, right? You have to prove that they made that connection, which, you know, if it was happened verbally and no one actually wrote it down in an email or a text message or a DM or whatever, how, how on earth are you going to prove that? Right. You don't. Uh, yep. So I, I really don't know what's to be done about it. Uh, it's uh, it is what it is. It's I, I don't, I don't see a way of fixing it. Honestly, mm -hmm. that's it. I just, I don't see a way of fixing it. I, I acted like I had more to say there, but I just, I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's dig into a little bit more with, with Ohio State's recruits here. As I mentioned, 17 officially committed right now as we're recording. Uh, Ohio State currently number four overall in the 24 seven composite rankings. By the way, Kyle, let's. Let's just say, let's just say 18. Let's not confuse. Okay. Let's All not right, confuse 18. the fact that Gabe Powers hasn't signed yet. Okay. 18. You're right. 18. So currently with 18 commit, Ohio State's fourth overall, which a lot of people will look at that and be like, oh, Ohio State's been second and third in the past how many years? Like, yeah. They look at the one negative with Terrence Brooks from what happened today and just say, yeah. this is a complete failure and this and that. Ohio State has, and I'm going to count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players. Seven players right now in the top 100. That's really good. That's really good. 24 sports got, composite rankings. Mm -hmm. They got seven studs in the top 100, not to include a very talented wide receiver just outside the top 100 that a lot of former players and current players are really raving about. Um, yeah. Keanu Grace, very, very talented wide receiver, and not to mention all the other players just outside the hundred there too. And anybody else, it's, it's, this is a really good recruiting class. It, it is. Kion. Excuse me, Kion. Thank you. There you go. We're all learning. We're still learning. Uh, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a very, very good class. I, I think I said this on the Monday episode. I said this in the preview. The The reason why I think we feel so salty about this class, why some people feel so salty about this class, Kyle and I are happy with it, is that, you know, if you'd asked us in August or July, we would have said, yeah, 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 this, this group of freshmen coming in are good. But man, this next class, you know, and because it did look that way, it, this this signing, this recruiting class that Ohio State just signed is a disappointment based off of based off of where we thought it could have been 
based off of where we thought it could have been with our expectations, you know, rewind six months ago. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, and like some things happen, right? Quinn Ewers reclassifies, which is like not a big deal, except now he's transferred and that that's just a whole other issue, right? Um, they lost Singletary, which sucked. Uh, but then they replaced Singletary with Terrence Brooks. All right, awesome. Well, of course, now they just lost Terrence Brooks. Okay. And I know a lot of people are still really worried about the cornerback position, but Ohio State had two really good classes. The past two classes, really good showings for the corners. So Ohio State is not nearly uh, as hurting for corners as some people think they are. They, they're they just a little young in the corner right now. And, you know, with the, the, the red shirt freshmen becoming sophomores, and the freshmen becoming sophomores and redshirt freshmen, and they get, you know, they're in the, it'll be fine. I'm not worried about it, especially, by the way, especially if Cam Brown comes back, you get a fully healthy Cam Brown plus uh, Burks, Denzel mm-hmm. Burke. I don't know why I pluralized his name, Denzel Burke. Um, you'll be fine. That Those are two great corners, and they have tons of corners, again, both of the 2021 and 2020 classes who are fantastic. I'm not worried about the cornerback position. A lot of people are like, oh, and cornerback is such a position of need. I'm not going to worry about it. Again, and none of this is like to say, well, Ohio State doesn't need, they'd love to have Terrence Brooks. Amazing player. Great player. This is a big loss. It's a big loss. I'm not going to, I'm not going to act like it's not, but, Ohio State is not nearly as hurting at corner as some people believe that they are. Mm-hmm. And, and it's yeah, so not I, even to mention, Kyle, that Jair Brown, Ryan Turner, and Kai Stokes are all in this class still. Yeah. I'm not so worried I put about in it. Here, I put in here, um, Jared, for the top of our notes here, the past, the past seven, seven? Yeah, sure. the past eight, sorry, the past eight recruiting cycles here, including mm-hmm. this one with 2022 so far, you, you do you do the average rankings. Yeah. It's, what did I have here? It's the fourth best, but it's still far above compared to other ones, like the 2020 class, which we thought was a really good class. This year's is higher ranking than that. 20, yeah. uh the 2016 class, the 2015 class, it, it surpassed all of those as well. And it's just behind this, that really studded class back in 2018 that we talked about. Yeah. Where Ohio State just missed out having the, the top recruiting class that year. They're just, just a few points behind that class. So this is what I'm trying to get at. This is a very, very good class here. It, it, it's, this it's is not, an excellent class. It, it's they just didn't fill out um the the number of recruits it wasn't there this year it, it's yet. it's going to improve it's going to yet it's going to add a couple more here but but yeah it's is it, we knew this was going to be a small recruiting class but the studs the the talent that they're bringing in here per per player is still excellent still excellent yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about it. Um you you get like a top 5 recruiting class. That's fine. That like that's it's really all you need because like players transfer and players don't pan out and players this and players, you know, you never really know how good a recruiting class is until well after the fact, of course, right? Of course. So as long as you get in that top 5, it's fine. Again, did I want Jaheim Singletary and Terrence Brooks. Yeah, I did. Would have loved to have have them. I'm not, I'm not trying to say otherwise. They're excellent players. Would have loved to have have them. But it, it's not, I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like Ohio State fans are really negative towards this class. And again, maybe it's just because the expectations were so high. Now, Kyle points out that uh, this current class, again, using 24-7 sports composite 
scores uh, points out that the class is currently sitting at 94.04 points. That's where they're currently sitting. Or excuse me, that's mm-hmm. their that's their average. Average per player, 94.04. Uh, the current class score is 289.58. Now, Ohio State has an opportunity, a very good opportunity, at the very least, to add three additional players. Now, new players tend to come on the radar after early signing day, and the transfer portal is still a thing. So the the silly season's not over yet. We're, we're still doing this thing. But Ohio State, I feel very, very confident, will at least add two more players. Those two players, Amari Abor and Hero Canoe. Neither of those guys are included in any of the numbers Kyle and I just talked about. If, and quite frankly, when, Ohio State adds Amari Abor and Hero Canoe, uh, their total score, that 289, will bump up to about a 301. And that takes those 18 commits up to 20 commits. And again, I feel very, very good that both of these players end up at Ohio State. Uh, Canoe, uh, one of the reasons why we haven't seen them commit yet, uh, Hero Canoe is uh, January 8th. He's going to announce announce during the um, Adidas High School All-American game. And Amari Abor will announce on January 2nd for the Under Armour All-American game. So the, the... you know, why haven't they committed yet? Why haven't they signed yet? That's why. They they have their they have their stuff scheduled already. Uh we'll see those commitments those days. They'll pick their hats on TV. Uh and unless something t- changes and things change, we weren't mm-hmm. worried about Terrence Brooke a week ago. Um but unless things change, I feel very, very good that Ohio State walks away with both of these players. Mm-hmm. And let's, yeah, let's not forget too. There's, we mentioned him, I think last week or a couple of weeks ago, uh, Carson Hinsman, yeah. the, the offensive lineman from Wisconsin. I think we spent some time talking about, oh, how state maybe stealing a, an offensive lineman from the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. But that that's totally on the table still. But it was reported um, by, I think basically I think it was both uh, Mark Givler and um, yeah. Anyway, uh, Mark Givler, uh, I think uh, broke on the Buckeye scoop board that it was, or was it Gleitman? It was one of the two guys. I forget. Um, Basically said that uh, Carson Hinsman was not going to be signing during the early signing period. This was, this was the news on uh, Tuesday night. I'm not going to sign during the early signing period. He's going to wait until February. He's not decided. He's not ready to make a choice. He's waiting until February. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, quite frankly, I think that's good news for Ohio State. I, I think the the kid needs convincing that he's willing to leave the home state Badgers. I think that's good news for Ohio State if if he's looking because I think the more he thinks about it, the more logical he gets, and so on and so forth, right? Um, but then on the morning of National Signing Day, uh, Mark Givler reports that, uh, well, maybe he commits on Friday. So I I think we'll either know on Friday or we won't. <laughs> It's really that simple because uh, uh, if you don't, the early signing period, I believe Kyle, I don't know if you want to fact check me on this uh, or if someone wants to fact check me on this, that we won't see. I believe that the uh, early signing period essentially runs from Wednesday to Friday. Yeah. It's, it's only a few days. It's not. Yeah. You're, you're, you are right. I'm just not sure how long it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's. Here. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's it's Wednesday to Friday. As Kyle does a classic, look it up, Kyle. Look it up. 
Well, while, while, while I'm doing this, Jared, I think this would be a good opportunity to do an ad read from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I think, Kyle, that that is a fantastic idea. Kyle, I already told you about the Iron Bean Coffee Company, right? Veteran-owned, uh, fresh roast to order, marine-owned, Ohio-based, fair trade certified, USDA organic coffee company, all of those amazing and wonderful things. Um, what you might not know is that their coffee is fantastic because, like, you don't know until you've actually tried it, right? You actually have to try it. You actually have to go get some of that coffee. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe give you guys a bit of a, a starter. Let me give you guys a bit of a starter here. I'm going to give you one. I think I think these are my favorite coffees from the light, medium, and dark roast. All right. I think, and, I, and I, I reserve the right to change my mind. I think these are my favorites. The light roast is the Loki. Uh, it's a wet process blend. Um, it's much higher in caffeine and a much thicker taste than you might expect from a light roast coffee. I'm not... I'm more of a medium. Medium's typically where I buy. Light, uh, not necessarily huge on the light roast, uh, but the Loki changes my mind. This is a light roast done right. Uh, it does not taste watered down. Does not taste weak by any means. Uh, it's a fantastic coffee filled with bold flavor. Uh, my favorite of the medium roast, and I have to say, I'm 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 real stuck between the cast iron or the ride or die. But I think I'm going to go with the ride or die. Uh, it's a gentle yet distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup uh, made from Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee beans, superb smoothness and flavor. And when it comes to the dark roast, uh, I I have to say my favorite so far, and, and I've had a few and I like them all, but I think my favorite so far is the drink from the skull of your enemy. Uh, it's a traditional Indonesian co coffee. It's uh, it's edgy. It's got a bit of a smoky flavor to it. Um, it's still uh, it has like of a kind of a creamy texture. Uh, it has notes of like uh, cedar and sweet tobacco, wine and spice. Uh, it's a very complex tasting coffee. Sometimes a dark roast coffee. Again, like I, I prefer a medium roast. Sometimes a dark roast coffee, all you really taste is like the roast. All you really take taste is that it's dark. But not the case here. Very com uh, very complex coffee. Lots of flavor going on there. Uh, I, I don't I don't do anything to it. I, don't, I add no creamer. I do nothing to it. So. Yeah, of course you would, of course, Suncard, you would come out of Lurk just to say that. Just to say that. That is what you would do. It's what you did, as a matter of fact. So uh, with all that being said, um, that's Iron Bean Coffee. You can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, did you find the answer? If not, we're moving I forward. did, and you are right. It is this Friday. Okay. There you go. Okay, Kyle, we, we talked about some of, by the way, did, did we actually, <laughs> Kyle, we're bad at podcasting. Are we? Yeah, I think we are. Uh, well, I think maybe we thought we talked about this already, but we didn't. Uh, Caden Curry commits to Ohio State. <laughs> that did happen. Yes. Well, I, so, let, I think actually, I had actually... it. I think I had it let's somewhere in my head that we talked about it on Monday, but that's impossible <laughs> considering right, he committed on a Tuesday. Let's all right. Let's let's actually list all the the players' names here because we didn't do that yet. So, C.J. Hicks, linebacker, uh, safety, uh, Sony Styles, um, who but C.J. classified. C.J. Hicks is your new favorite Buckeye. If you don't know it already. If you don't know it already, C.J. Hicks is your new favorite Buckeye. Uh, what what Henderson did for the running backs this year, I think Hicks can do for the linebackers this year. I would not be surprised to, and I'm not necessarily saying week one. Again, we're having this Henderson conversation. I would not be surprised to see C.J. Hicks, if not starting, getting very serious playing time uh, by midseason. Maybe you could say the same thing with Sonny Styles too. Sonny Styles, um, I, I'm interested to find out where they play him, uh, whether he's a linebacker yep. or a safety. It does does bullet. Ohio State still have a bullet position under a new defensive coordinator? Uh, so that will be very interesting to see uh, where Sonny Styles ends up because he's either um, 
He because if he's gonna play linebacker, I think he needs to add some muscle. Again, he he reclassified. He's a high school junior right now. He's got some weight to add on still, right? But at six mm-hmm. four, that's a pretty big safety. So let's uh let's see let's see where Ohio State ends up with that. Yep. All right. And also uh quarterback Devin Brown out out in Utah. Uh, Devin Brown. Oh no. Let's let's talk about him, Kyle. Jeez. Okay. Good moving right. so fast. Uh, somehow, Kyle, the quarterback in this class is going unnoticed, which is wild. Um, I, I think, and Kyle and I probably guilty of this as much as anyone else, really underselling how good Devin Brown is. Uh, yeah, just he, outside he threw, the top he, fifty overall. Um, yeah, he th- he threw his senior year. He threw for almost. 5,000 yards, not not 5,000 for his career, his senior year, almost 5,000 passing yards and through like something like 54 or 57 touchdowns. Now, again, not his career, his senior year. Yeah. It was like 4,854-ish touchdowns passing. Just and ridiculous. His, and, his, and, his son car, and his son card points out uh, down in our live chat down there, Joe Germain's boy. Yeah, that's right. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Some of us are old enough to be very happy about that connection. Yeah. All right. Uh, wide receiver Caleb Brown, Burton, excuse me, Caleb Burton. Um, here, here's <laughs> Talk a... about a mistake we're going to be making a lot in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, kid, kid out of um, the heart of Texas there in Austin, stealing right in the backyard of, of um, Texas University there. Another, another stud wide receiver coming into to this uh, wide receiver group. Yeah, absolutely. As well, I think as, well, as, well uh, as well as Caleb Brown. Yes. <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah. Caleb um, Burton and Caleb Brown. Yeah, both uh, smaller wide receivers than Ohio State's picked up recently. Um, I think Ryan Day has said that they aren't necessarily too interested or concerned in recruiting a certain body type at wide receiver. Uh, that that feels a little bit like the case here. Uh, one, one of these players... Uh, uh, Burton coming in at six foot Brown coming in at five, nine, but you know, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. These are both fantastic football players. Uh, guys, guys, how does Heartline keep getting away with it? <laughs> the the H back is dead. Sun card. Yeah. We, we, we don't know. We don't know if the bullet's dead or not. The H back is dead. I mean, a guy I'm really excited to see here, uh, Kenyatta Jackson. He's a yeah. kid out of Florida. Here, he's going to he's your he's your main edge rusher for this for this recruiting class here. So far, Man, he, he, yeah. Mari <laughs> Mari Abor might have something to say about that, Kyle. Yeah, keep an eye on um, Kenyatta Jackson. He's he can be a household name uh, later on in his career. Yeah. Uh, I would say, yeah, big dude, six five, two thirty five, um, big dude. You know, compare that to Amari Abor, six four, two forty. Pretty comparable as far as their size goes. Uh, I would ex- maybe expect eight. Like if you have both of these guys on the field at the same time, um, mm-hmm. you know, maybe Abor is more of your Jack Sawyer, and uh, Kenyatta Jackson's more your Tui Molau. Uh, does that make sense? Am I making sense right now? Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. And Jared already mentioned, uh, Caden Curry, uh, over in Indiana joins this recruiting class as well and mentioned his name already, but man, I mean, I like, I like Burton and I like Brown, but keep your eye on, um, on Gray's. I mentioned him earlier in this episode, but keep an eye on Gray's kid out of Arizona. That that yeah. kid is special. I've I've watched a few of his tapes. Amazing, amazing. Suncard we, says, we got- "Can you guys text CJ Hicks and ask him to wear one number his entire OSU career?" L- H- Hicks has enough sway coming in that he could make that happen. Yes. There, there, he's not going to get saddled with a number he doesn't want. Mm-hmm. And we got Big T here, Jared. We got Big T. Kyle, did you skip Caden Curry? No, I said I'm ready. Okay. Okay. I said Big I'm T. Already. Big T. Big, 
Big T out of Lakota West, and we're talking about Tegra. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle you're, hates you're... Indiana. Uh, yeah, uh, Tegra Chabola, <laughs> um, really sort of the crown jewel of the Ohio State offensive line recruiting class. Um, I think it's, he's underrated. He might be slightly underrated uh, when... You know, I, he's about, if you look at the rankings, he's about in the same area as Hinsman. So, you know, maybe you have, you know, the, the, those are your two, like, if they're playing at the same time, that's your left tackle and your left guard right there. That's, uh, if, if we're, if we're projecting forward a few years, that could very well be your left side of your offensive line between those two, um, and again, like we, we don't, we don't know where Hinsman's going yet. I feel good. Not great about Hinsman. Um, (laughs) Hey, yeah. Sun card. If, if they get Hinsman, no, uh, sun card says crown jewel, perhaps the only jewel offensive line recruiting class. Um, not star laden, not star laden, not, uh, looking at the recruiting rankings, this is not a good offensive line class. Um, Ohio State is not the past couple years, aside from maybe getting like one great player, because that's typically kind of what we see out of Ohio State. They, they get like one really good offensive lineman, but kind of miss the boat on depth. Um, and I don't even know if they got the one great offensive line, like, because, you know, when I say one great, I'm talking about like, Paris Johnson Jr., who was a top 10 player, you know, yeah. uh, Nicholas yeah. Petit Faree, a top 10 yep. player. Um, that's that player's not on the Ohio State uh, class. That's not on the Ohio State signing class this year. Um, and like, yeah, so with take- all due respect to like Avery Henry, who is from my high school, I, and I have nothing but love for the kid. I, he- I hear nothing but how amazing of a kid he is. But I don't think Ohio State should be reaching for players who are uh, according to the 24 seven sports rankings this is the composite rankings we have on the notes here mm-hmm. the number 43 player in the state of ohio now i want to say for the record that the 24 7 proper rankings have him considerably higher i think they have him at like 19 or something like that i, I can pull that up um, um, they have him as the 21st in Ohio, but the overall offensive tackles 116th in the 24 seven composite, but 43rd in the 24 seven. So that, that, that is very significant too. So there's a big, there's a big, um, there, there's a big difference between what, like, say, you know, rivals in ESPN think about Avery Henry and what 24 seven sports thinks about Avery Henry. So you know, that's, yeah, and, that's and, a thing and, to keep in mind. It, and a lot of, a lot of it too had to be like how they really evaluated him prior. And now that he's dropped weight, he's leaned yeah. out. Yeah. He looks, he looks like a, like a really good division one offensive tackle. Now we'll right. see. Well, it's just, it it is what it is when you come from a high school that small. It's just the competition level. He's going to need some time to bake. He's, he's, he's in for a world of hurt when he starts practicing against other scholarship players at Ohio state. It's he's going to have a rough couple of years that that's just Mm -hmm. the fact of the matter. He is, he's never faced anyone like this because he comes from such a small school. It is what it is. He's going to need a couple years to bake. We'll, we'll see where he comes out on the other side of it. It could be a huge win for Ohio State. But, yep. you know, Suncard isn't wrong. The The one other member of this, cl- they only have three offensive linemen currently in this recruiting class. Now, again, recruiting's not over. February is, you know, the, the next signing day is still two plus months away. Hinsman might sign. But as of right now, as of right this second, I say only has three members of this, uh, three offensive line members in this recruiting class. And one of them is a project player. 
And again, no, no disrespect to Henry, but just he's not faced the level of competition required to be anywhere near ready to get on the field for Ohio State. There's going to be a, a real adjustment period for him. Um, yep. uh, so the, the third player who we've not mentioned by name yet, George Fitzpatrick, offensive tackle out of Inglewood, Colorado. Uh, but by all means, probably a really good player. Uh, I, I don't necessarily know at this point, but yeah, it's a very, very good off, but I, just, I don't want him to be the second best offensive lineman in the recruiting class. That's the problem. Yeah. The problem yeah. is, is, is as much as I think George Fitzpatrick can contribute at Ohio state and be a good player at Ohio state. I don't want him being the second best offensive lineman in the Ohio state recruiting class. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, the rest of the, this class here, um, Mentioned him before, uh, Kojo Antwi, um, kid out of Georgia, another really good wide receiver to add to this already stellar class, uh, stellar um, wide receiver group. Yeah. Uh, Jair Brown, defensive back, um, also out of Lakota West. Um, oh, I thought I thought someone else was Lakota West. I'm I'm mistaking. Um, oh no, yeah, yeah, Big T, Big T's out of yeah. Um, Dakota West too. And then you have uh, Dallin Hayden, the running back out of Tennessee, uh, Ryan Turner, defensive back out of uh, Florida. Insanely and, underrated. I just want to point that out. Yeah. Ryan Turner, insanely underrated. Uh, the other thing I want to point out about Ryan Turner is, I don't know. I think that's fine. I think I'll just go with uh, completely underrated. I think I'll, I think I'll stick with that for right now. Okay. Um, uh, and we have Kai Stokes. I think oh, he's probably going to be. He's a he's a teammate of Kenyatta Jackson too, for what it's worth. Yeah, we have Kai Stokes out of Florida too. I think he's going to be more of like a defensive back. I would I would I would think <laughs> just the way. Just generally a defensive back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, but it's but but Kyle's right. Like, is he a corner? Is he a nickel corner? Is he a safety? Not not really sure yet but definitely a, a heck of a athlete. And then rounding, rounding out here is uh, Bennett Christian, the, the one tight end for this recruiting class. And of course, Gabe Powers, who we are just waiting for him to sign later this week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Gabe Powers, for what it's worth, I think fits really well in the new Knowles system. Um, I, I really think Ohio State is looking at a linebacker renaissance. I completely believe that. I'm on board with that. Between the players coming in, and by the way, Gabe Powers might be a defensive end. Just going to point that out. That's not that's yet to be determined. But I really think even based off of the guys who are already on the team, add C.J. Hicks to that, maybe most importantly, add Knowles to that, and we're looking at a real linebacker renaissance at Ohio state. I fully believe that. Yep. All right. Absolutely. Kyle, that is all of the players. Um, Sun card says we do have to trust that the coaches know a little more than us. And I think he said this in regards to us talking about the offensive line recruiting. Yes, but the offensive, but yes, but the coaches wanted Ernest green. They just didn't get Ernest Green. The yeah. coaches wanted Cam Dewberry, Emil Wagner, Zach Rice, Addison Nichols, Tyler Booker, Billy Schrath, Kenyatta Goodwin. The coaches wanted those guys. It's not that they didn't want them. It's not that they passed on them. It's not, this is not a, you know, this is not a, an Elias Rick situation where they said, you know what? No, thank you. No, they wanted those guys and those guys just chose to play football somewhere else. I got to, I got to update this, Jared. We, we just had a, um, just national wise. Um, if you scroll up on our notes with the team rankings. Yeah. Yeah. The, Texas the... A&M just stole another defensive back as we were, as we were, uh, talking they flipped a defensive back from georgia uh, marquise groves hillebrew 
right out the backyard of Georgia there. So Texas A&M even separating even further from Alabama for that number one spot. Why, why am I still convinced Bama wins that number one spot, though? <laughs> it's just experience, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. Um, by the way, for everyone who's worried about players transferring, players transferring, players transferring, I'm not. I mean, look at Texas A&M. 26 commits, Alabama, 24 commits, Georgia, 26 commits, Texas, 27 commits. They're always bringing new guys in. Ohio State's still sitting at 18. I know we don't talk a ton about oversigning anymore. A lot of rules were put in place to minimize the effects of oversigning. But you, you do have to wonder, like, you do have to wonder why is it that we see Ohio state bringing in 20 guys? Cause it'll be 20 at the least, at the least it'll actually end up being 20, but Texas A&M and Georgia, Texas all going 25 plus. Something doesn't quite add up there for me. Why is Ohio state passing on good players? when other teams are signing six or so more players than Ohio state, what's happening there. So if I'm, <sighs> if I'm adding, the, if I'm adding these up, Jared, if I'm yeah, adding yeah. these up 27 uh -huh. from 2019, 26 from 2020. Sure. Is this Bama 20, or Georgia? Texas A&M. Ooh. 23 and 21. And how many for this year so far? 25? 25. And how, 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 many is, how many can you allow in a um, recruiting? How many total scholarships can you have? 85? Yeah. Well, unless my math's wrong here, it's 101. So you're anticipating a full recruiting class. Yeah. Over. Well, so like a lot of these players are going to be three and done. And a lot of these players will transfer. Um, but how many, how many is that really? Like how many do you really anticipate that's going to leave early? Maybe five? Three and duns? Well, that that's sort mm -hmm. of the thing of it. If you're Texas A&M and they're what at four or five, five stars right now kind of anticipate that all those guys are three and done. So it doesn't mean that they are, but you know, there's maybe a high four star that takes a five stars place and is three and done. But, so, let, but, but also there's the transfer portal, Kyle, like the kids can just leave. And again, the more talent you have, the more that the kids who don't make it are going to just poof yeah. gone. They're, they're averaging about two, five star two to one five stars a year texas a&m for the past four years it's still that's that's still i get it let's just let's just round up let's just say round up to 10 10 five star players that's still doesn't add up i get it but again players transfer players medically retire sometimes legitimately sometimes not uh mm -hmm. players do all they just they just leave they just leave the team for educational reasons for criminal reasons for i'm sick of college football and i'd like to go home now reasons kids leave uh natural yeah. attrition happens so I, I don't think your math quite adds up as far as that goes even in a pre-transfer portal world but especially in the transfer portal world kids leave it happens like it's, you know, Ohio State has lost a few players already to the transfer portal. Some expected, some slightly surprising. Yep. I mean, look no further than, um, look no further than Ryan Watts. Ryan Watts 
presumably, I have no idea. I haven't talked to him. I don't know what's going on in his head. But presumably, Ryan Watts looks at the cornerback room and says, I can't start here. And says, I'm going to go start, I believe, at Kentucky. Is that where he ended up? He's going to go play at Kentucky, where he feels like he can get playing time. And the same way we saw, you know, and might continue to see wide receivers leave that crowded wide receiver room. Look around that wide receiver room and they're going to bolt. Same thing we saw with the quarterbacks. Uh, Miller's gone. Ewers is gone. Why? Because neither, because the Ohio State quarterback position is on lock for at least one more season. So they Mm -hmm. leave. Yep. This is the flip side of success. All right. I think that's it, Jared. I think that is today's episode as we. I never said anything bad about side. Julian Fleming. Julian Fleming will be just fine. Yes. Uh, ask Sloopcast. Should they just start a new league that can't recruit high school and only use portal players uh wasn't okay first off no one's starting a new league but like there have been teams who've completely remade themselves in the transfer portal over the past couple years i mean michigan state didn't completely remake themselves in the transfer portal but they kind of did and what was it? I want to say it was was it Kansas State? Someone had like an insane, an absolutely insane percentage of their players coming in from the transfer portal. Um, Let's see the t- the top teams here, Jared. Oh, the co- transfer the transfer dang. portal ra- the transfer portal rankings coming in at number two is Michigan State. Is this last Come- year's? transfer portal this is 2022 oh so michigan state's doing it again good for them um yeah 2022 michigan state two indiana three uh i see here who's number one uh usf okay that makes sense south carolina at nine texas at 10 arkansas at eight why, what, what, ones. what what order are you reading these in? <laughs> Just power five teams. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry, Texas is at what? Ten. How many players are in that class? <laughs> Maybe one. One. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one. It's probably just one. Uh uh, Kabuta says the idea is to give players in limbo a chance. There's going to be some players in limbo. I think a lot more players are entering the transfer portal than are going to find homes on the other side of the transfer portal, at least homes in division one FBS. Yeah. Let's see. Um, give me your starting quarterbacks for 22, 23 and 24. Um, I'm going to, well, 22 is CJ Stroud, 23. I'm going to go ahead and say Kyle McCord 24. Um, someone not currently on the team. Um, I mean, why I not, why not Devin, Bra- why not Devin Brown, Devin Brown, I think is a place to start. Um, is that a burn? Where's the burn? I basically said there's no burn there. There's absolutely no burn there. I basically said McCord is going to one and done his way into the NFL. If I wanted, if I wanted to, I I could have easily said that he would have played two or three years at Ohio state. Um, I'd have to think about his eligibility on that, on the three part, but yeah, the, no, I think that's a, a totally reasonable way to happen. Well, uh, no, but I I don't know that Devin Brown starts at Ohio State. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. I my feeling, if we're looking at who's going to be the quarterback at Ohio State in twenty twenty four, 
Um, I'm going, I'm going into my recruiting cheat sheet here for a second. Um, I don't, I don't like any of the 2023 guys yet. I don't like any of the 2023 guys so far. Um, to expect a freshman to come in and play right away might be a lot. Uh, but I know Ohio State and Jaden Davis, again, 2024 recruiting, are already pretty close. Do kids look at Joe Burrow and think five years isn't? No. No. Absolutely not. Uh, I Why? <laughs> Kabuto, why even try? Because why even try to predict the 2024 quarterback at this point? Because Sun Card asked me to. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> um yeah i don't know i, I know they have Jaden really good relationship with Jaden davis i don't i i don't know true freshman quarterback though um maybe maybe not thanks kabuto i appreciate you uh not really listening the <laughs> um i don't know it could be a transfer portal kid that's always a possibility. Uh, maybe it's someone from the 2023 class who just isn't really on my radar yet. Ooh. But I, I just, I don't have a good feel about any of the, the, the 2023 quarterbacks. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of names of people, um, Cameron Edge, Makai Singleton, Tad Hudson, uh, William Watson, Dante Moore, um, Nico, last name to be determined later. Uh, I'm not going to try it. Um, yeah. Dylan uh, Lenergren, uh, Eli Holstein, L lots of good. Lots of good 2023 kids out there. I just don't know where Ohio State sits with any of them in particular. It's, I don't know. I want to say it's too early to say, but actually it's not. This is like prime time for uh, quarterback recruiting. It's it's no it's no longer early for the 2023 kids, especially for the quarterback position, who tends to commit pretty far in advance. Yep. Kyle, any other Ask Sloopcast questions we need to get to? No, I think I think that's it here, Jared. Cool. Uh, that's it then. That is the end of today's episode. Um, again, make sure to follow us on our YouTube channel. Um, if you're not already, there'll be a thing at the very end of the show that that pops up. And if you're watching this on the Buckeye Scoop, that is, uh, you can hop, you can click on that link and make sure to be subscribed to us on our YouTube channel, as we will no longer be posting on the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel effective January first. Um, and if you want details on anything, come by the discord server and we will give you links, or you can just go to the sloopcast.com where you can find links. Uh, so if you're, if you're looking for links, or maybe if you're just, if you're a typer, if typing's your thing, you can go to youtube.thesloopcast.com and find our YouTube channel there. Uh, Kyle, that's all I feel like doing in the plugging section. Uh, how, uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I think probably the biggest no, apple Ohio pie State. sun card the, apple pie the um i don't i think that the biggest surprise i've ever seen ever in recruiting here happened today with travis hunter the the top recruit for this this year's class yeah just decommitting from florida state and going to jackson state yeah how about that uh i'm calling shenanigans Mm hmm. Yeah, this is, this is a big old shenanigans here. I, I completely agree here. Like it's. Man. I'm just I'm saying Deion Sanders works part time at a particular I almost called them news organization. But good Lord, is that a uh, a lofty <laughs> description of that shithole? <laughs> Deion Sanders works part time at a. um. I it, it's 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 Tosh point oh for sports. I don't know. That's an insult to <laughs> it's an insult to Tosh point oh. Um, Deion Sanders works at a particular place. That particular place he works part time. By the way, 
that particular place uh, allegedly. I don't. I don't know if this is. I don't know if this is true. This is all rumor. Allegedly, uh, is paying that player a uh, a lot of money in in uh, name in, in name image likeness. So we'll see how that how we'll see how that pans out. All right. Nope. That's it, Jared. That's all I got for today. Okay. Uh, that is then, Kyle, the end of our episode. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Cincinnati-based band called The Light Wires. That's three words, The Light Wires. Um, the name of this song is Me in Her Wild Hair. Um, you can listen, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can just keep doing what you're doing. Just don't, just don't touch your phone. Just don't touch your phone for the next couple minutes and you'll be listening to this song. Uh, YouTube folks, uh, you do have to click a link. Uh, down in the show notes if you want to listen to this song. Uh, so, Kyle, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is The Light Wires. Mm-hmm.